Assalamu alaikum everyone, I am back with another video and today we will be talking about a uh, very interesting chapter and that is called energy from chemicals. When we say energy from chemicals, what are we talking about? We are actually talking about the energy associated with breaking of bonds and formation of bonds because that's where energy comes from inside a chemical and that's where energy goes into when we, when we are talking about energy from chemicals right so uh, there are two ways there are two directions in which energy can go during a chemical reaction right whether that energy is released and or the other thing is that the energy can be absorbed right so we can classify chemical reactions on the basis of on the basis of the direction of energy that is being released or absorbed Okay, when we are talking about energy here we are primarily talking about heat energy because heat energy is the one that is driving a chemical reaction okay and uh, all the energy changes most of the energy changes that happens during a chemical reactions involve heat energy okay. Now if we can classify uh, a, a reactions in two types depending on the uh, direction of heat okay then there is, there is exothermic reactions and then there are endothermic reactions they are endothermic reactions exothermic reactions are those reactions in which heat is released to the surroundings in which heat is released to the surroundings and where is that heat coming from this heat is coming from the bonds the chemical bonds inside a chemical okay and endothermic reactions heat is absorbed it is absorbed from the surroundings it is absorbed okay and where is that heat going to if it is if it is being absorbed it is going inside the bonds of a chemical okay so uh, we have to relate uh, the heat release and the heat absorbed with breaking and formation of bonds uh, let's uh, let's take this example for example if you want to break something uh, let's say if there is a table in front of you or a chair in front of you and if you break if you want to break that thing what would you have to do you would have to give it energy and what would that thing has to do it has to absorb energy it will absorb energy which will help in its breakage right so if you want to if you want to break bonds bonds have to absorb energy okay so which means that when heat is absorbed bonds are broken when heat is absorbed bonds are broken and alternatively when heat is released bonds are formed bonds are formed but one thing has to be uh, clarified here uh, many many people actually confuse that confuse the fact that uh, exothermic reactions are not those reactions in which heat is in which heat is only released okay and endothermic reactions are not uh, the reaction in which heat is only absorbed okay in exothermic reactions heat is released as well as absorbed and in endothermic reactions heat is absorbed as well as released but there is a difference there is a difference stay with me uh, in exothermic reaction heat release is greater than heat absorbed and in endothermic reactions heat absorbed is greater than heat release so basically in both the reactions bonds are going to be broken and bonds are going to be formed so heat is going to be released as well as absorbed it's just that we need to see okay, how much is the net amount of heat uh, whether that is being absorbed or whether that is being released so if heat release is greater than the heat absorbed then the reaction will be called an exothermic reaction okay so if if so if uh, a question comes up in exams if they ask you why a certain reaction is exothermic reaction and they will often ask you to uh, talk about uh, the energy changes in terms of bond breaking and bond formation so that's what you will write so why a certain reaction is exothermic reaction because heat released heat released during bond formation is greater than is greater than heat absorbed is greater than 
heat absorbed during bond breaking during bond breaking okay and in endothermic reactions we can uh, it would be vice versa that heat absorbed heat absorbed during bond breaking during bond breaking this would be the answer of the question that whether why a certain reaction is endothermic reaction so we would say it is an endothermic reaction because heat absorbed during bond during bond breaking is greater than is greater than heat released is greater than heat released during bond formation during bond formation right so that's how you define why a certain reaction is exothermic or endothermic now it is important that we discuss just to start uh, learning another concept that is of enthalpy that is of enthalpy enthalpy okay let's talk about that what is enthalpy it is the net heat content of a system it is the net heat content of a system it is denoted by delta h its value can be negative as well as positive depending on the type of reaction now what does that mean it's pretty simple if heat released is more than heat absorbed it means that the net heat change of a system will be negative if for example uh, 50 joule of energy is being released and only 20 joule is being absorbed then the net change would be minus 30 and that net change is basically the enthalpy change okay so for an exothermic reaction delta h should be delta h should be negative because more heat is being subtracted out of the system than added so the net heat content will be negative okay and oppositely uh, for an endothermic reaction delta h should be positive because more heat is being added into the system than extracted for example if 50 joule energy is coming in and only 20 joule is come going out so the net change would be plus 30 joules so delta h would be 30 joules it will be positive so uh, whenever you are given a reaction they, you can uh, actually tell whether that reaction is exothermic or endothermic by looking at the enthalpy values if it's negative the reaction has to be exothermic if it's positive the reaction has to be endothermic now there is another concept that you need to know and that is of activation energy activation energy is the energy the minimum energy the minimum energy activation is ea a for activation e for energy it is the minimum energy required by reactant molecules by reactant molecules to kick start a chemical reaction to kick start kick start a chemical reaction okay now let's express that in the form of a graph all of it all of these concepts the exothermic endothermic enthalpy and activation energy we can all assimilate all of these concepts into a single diagram which we call the energy profile diagrams we call them energy profile diagrams in which we plot energy with the progress of reaction energy profile diagrams okay now let's do that let's talk about first exothermic reactions for exo this is for exo okay so uh since uh energy is being released in exothermic reactions so we can say that uh, uh you know that reactants form products right and uh, in exothermic reaction when we say energy is being released it means that uh, reactants are releasing that energy reactants are releasing that energy which is not going into products which is going to the surroundings okay which means that reactants had an extra energy that products did not have so in exothermic reactions reactants are reactants are at a higher energy level at in terms of energy reactants are at higher energy level as compared to products 
because during the course of the reaction energy is being released and this energy is not being absorbed into products it is released into the surroundings okay so when we draw the energy profile diagram uh pardon me just to draw straighter line okay right so energy profile diagram the x axis is the progress of reaction progress of reaction okay from left to right reaction is progressing and the y axis is actually energy now for exothermic reaction reactants are at a higher energy level as compared to products so we'll start reactants from here uh, start reactants from here these are the reactants and products will have a lower energy let's say these are the products now what is the activation energy it is the minimum energy required by reactant molecules to kick start a chemical reaction so that is the kind of the curve that is formed now this energy on this energy from the reactants to the highest point of the peak is called the activation energy the reaction the reaction kick starts after this activation energy is reached after the reactant molecules actually uh, achieve this activation energy reaction starts to happen automatically okay so activation energy is the energy from the reactants energy to the highest point of the peak okay and what about enthalpy enthalpy is net heat content of the system which is decreasing as you can see during the course of the reaction energy has dropped down from reactants to products energy has dropped down so you'll show that with a downward arrow and we'll say the delta h is equal to negative okay let's say if if you are drawing they often ask you to draw the dot and cross diagram and they give you a reaction let's say they give you a reaction methane is reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water okay so uh, in that case let's say if they told you delta h is negative so from negative you can see that reactants will be uh, on, on at the higher energy level and products will be at the lower energy level so when you are actually drawing energy profile diagram for an actual reaction instead of writing reactants you write the actual reactants okay and inside of products you write the actual products that is the only difference so that was for exothermic reaction that reactants were at a higher energy level than products now let's talk about endothermic reactions let's draw it a bit closer so that we can compare uh endothermic reactions endo okay in endothermic reactions again reactants are converting into products but reactants are absorbing energy during the course of reaction reactants are absorbing heat energy to be converted into products now this heat energy is actually being used to form products okay so it means that uh, uh, products will have more energy than the reactants because uh, the reactants may seem to be absorbing heat but it is happening during the course of the reaction which means that reactants are absorbing heat and converting into products now products will have that heat that energy that reactants won't have so in that case when we draw the uh, energy profile diagram uh it's a bit tilted you got again Okay, oh, yeah, that's a bit better. So reactants will have it at uh, a lower energy level, and products will be at a higher energy level. Let's say these are the reactants, and these are the products. Okay, and okay, this will be the activation energy. From the reactants energy to the highest point of the peak is the activation energy. as far as enthalpy is concerned we know that energy is being absorbed so basically during the course of the reaction during the course of the reaction energy is being added into the system so you can show it with an upward arrow from reactants energy to products energy the delta h is positive so progress of reaction okay now again uh, like in exothermic reaction if you have an endothermic reaction let's say Uh, calcium carbonate is breaking down into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide and you have this reaction okay 
Now, uh, if they say delta H is positive here, now instead of by looking at the fact that delta H is positive, you can simply draw this diagram where that the reactants are going to be at a lower energy level, products at a higher energy level. The only difference when it comes to exams is that you need to write the actual reactants. CaCO3 and products are CaO plus CO2. Uh, okay, so that's all from the energy profile diagrams. Actually and actually, 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 we need to know how a catalyst impacts uh, the and this in these energy profile diagrams but before that uh, let's look at the two curves and uh, try to figure out which one will be uh, which one of the reactions will be faster this is by looking at their activation energies you can see in this reaction activation energy is lower as compared to this reaction so lower activation energy means lower time is required for the reactants to reach the minimum energy and RA activation energy means that more time is required by the reactant molecule to have to achieve this much energy. As a result, the is as a result the endothermic reactions are slower than exothermic reactions, or exothermic reactions are faster than endothermic reactions because exothermic reactions may activation energy is lower as compared to endothermic reactions. Okay, let's add a catalyst now. Now let's add in catalyst. So we are adding catalyst. What does the catalyst do? It increases the rate of reaction. What does the catalyst do? It increases the rate of reaction. And how would it do that? Rate of reaction as we said that those reactions will have greater rate of reaction which have the lower activation energy because lesser time uh, will be needed uh, to kickstart that reaction. So when you add a catalyst, catalyst also increases the rate of reaction and how does it do that? It does that by lowering the activation energy. Now, uh, it will shorten this peak. It will decrease the height of this peak. And this will be the activation energy of catalyst. Of a catalyzed reaction. Okay, similar is the case here. If you add a catalyst here, this curve will decrease in height. And activation energy will reduce. Okay, EA catalyzed reaction. So, what does the catalyst do? Catalyst increases the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. By lowering the activation energy. The activation energy. Okay, right. So, uh, I hope you got it. Now let's move on to some examples of exo and endothermic reactions. Let's talk about some exothermic reactions. The first exothermic reaction, a very important one, are the combustion reactions. What are combustion reactions? They are the reactions in which substances are burnt, substances are burnt in the presence of oxygen and heat is released. Okay, you can burn anything. You can burn uh, methane with oxygen in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. This is a combustion reaction. Whenever burning is happening in the presence of air, in the presence of oxygen that is called combustion okay r2o2 and 2h2o mm -hmm. right so moving another example would be uh, burning of hydrogen with oxygen and water is formed it's also it's this is also a, uh, an example of a combustion equation so the two one oxygen on the right there will be one oxygen on the Left. Now this reaction is the basis for the for the manufacturing of fuel cell. Fuel cell was discovered as an alternative fuel to power our vehicles. You need to know their advantages and disadvantages. Advantages is that uh, first of all it produces clean energy and it's pretty energy efficient fuel cells. They're energy efficient. And as far as the disadvantages go, as far as the disadvantages go, uh, they are very expensive. They're just too expensive to be feasible on a large scale. That's why fuel cell never became uh, the mainstream, uh, the mainstream, uh, the mainstream power source for vehicles. Okay. The other disadvantage is that it's not completely non-renewable. It's not completely renewable because 
uh, it requires hydrogen and hydrogen comes from fossil fuels from the cracking of hydrocarbons which come from fossil fuels you're going to study where hydrogen comes from okay so uh, so one example of exothermic reactions is combustion another example is respiration so what is respiration the food that we eat uh, in the form of glucose and the oxygen we inhale they react together to form carbon dioxide which we exhale and water which we uh, part of it we exhale now this this accompanies the release of uh, heat energy that is why it's a exothermic reaction if you exhale on your hands right now you can feel the heat coming from your mouth that is because of the fact that respiration is a is an exothermic process i right, know let's take some let's discuss some examples of endothermic reactions uh, endothermic reactions the first example is the decomposition reactions what are decomposition reactions where one where uh, less reactant produce more products in the sense that let's say uh, i have sodium carbonate or let's say calcium carbonate under the action of high heat it splits into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now clearly one uh, reactant is producing two products so this is a decomposition reaction and clearly it is going to be an endothermic reaction uh, i mean we can safely assume from this infer from this it is not a hard and fast rule you cannot see from the reaction whether it's exothermic or endothermic but we you can hack, you can take an informed guess for example this only one thing is making two things is high there is so it is going to be highly likely that the bonds uh, broken are going to be uh, really are going to be absorbing more energy as compared to energy release during bond formation so this is probably going to be an, end, an endothermic reaction whenever you see a reaction in which one reactant is re being broken down into more than one product it can be an example of decomposition reaction and it can be uh, it can be inferred from that that the reaction is endothermic okay and the other other example of an endothermic reaction is the opposite of respiration which is photosynthesis photosynthesis now what is photosynthesis uh the carbon dioxide that we exhale and the water that we give to uh plants okay they with the help of this carbon dioxide and water they make their food in the form of glucose and they release oxygen that we later use and this happens in the presence of sunlight that's why it's an endothermic reaction because uh, heat energy is being absorbed okay so these were the examples of exothermic and endothermic reactions uh, there is another thing that you need to discuss in this chapter and that we discussed fractional distillation of crude oil uh, in this chapter you need to know that uh, which fractions are used for is used in various you know industrial and commercial purposes uh, various fractions that come from crude oil we're going to discuss their uses now we have discussed fractional distillation in chapter number 2 we will discuss various other separation techniques as well uh, so this is fractional distillation of crude oil crude oil is entered into a fractionating column where it is heated and separated into different fractions for example residue fuel oil lubricating oil diesel kerosene naphtha and petrol and gas uh, so basically uh, as you can see small molecules have lower boiling points lower the boiling point higher will be its exit point for example between petrol and naphtha petrol has lower boiling point as compared to naphtha naphtha will have lower boiling point as compared to kerosene so lower the boiling point higher will be the exit point okay this which means that the fractions that are separated from the from the bottom most part of the fractionating column they'll have the highest boiling point okay now you need to know the uses for example petrol is used in uh, as a fuel petrol is used as a fuel uh, naphtha is used in chemicals in making chemicals of feedstock and kerosene kerosene uh, is also known as paraffin uh, let me just zoom in a bit or let me increase the strength of this okay uh, kerosene is also known as paraffin paraffin okay it is used in stoves cooking for cooking and heating okay and it's also used in jet fuel what about diesel diesel is used in diesel engines lubricating oil is used in making waxes and 
uh, polishes. Fuel oil, uh, you don't need to know that. And instead of residue, you just write bitumen here, okay? Now, bitumen is used in making road surfaces. So, petrol is used in as a fuel in cars, naphtha is used as a feedstock to make chemicals, kerosene or paraffin is used uh, for heating and cooking, uh, diesel is used as diesel engines, lubricating oil is used in making waxes and uh, polishes, and the bitumen is used in making roads. So, you, you must know because if they're going to ask you this question, they're going to test this concept that, for example, if this is A and this is B, they may ask you that uh, the boiling point of B is greater than A or boiling point of B is lesser than A. So you'll say that boiling point of B is greater than A because its exit point is lower. So heavier the, heavier the molecule, heavier the molecule, higher will be its boiling point and lower will be its exit point. So remember that. Uh, so that's all, theoretically that's all from this chapter. And now we're going to shift to another window where we're going to do some past paper questions so that you can understand the type of questions that come in exams. So let's do this question now. Question number one. Uh, which energy changes the activation energy for the catalyzed reaction? When you add a catalyst, activation energy is lowered. The high activation energy is lowered. So lower curve will be of uh, the catalyst. For the catalyzed reaction so this will be the answer the answer would be B so in the next question is the diagram shows the energy profile of a chemical reaction two energy changes are labeled X and Y what statement about the reaction is correct the activation energy of the reaction is X plus Y no the activation energy of this reaction is X the enthalpy change of the reaction is X no the enthalpy change of this reaction is Y uh, the enthalpy change of the reaction is X plus Y no, uh, the activation energy is X plus Y. The reaction is exothermic. That's true because reactants have more energy than products. So answer would be D. Okay. Which change is endothermic? Uh, this seems like a combustion reaction because oxygen ki presence for burning worry. It can't be the answer. And more molecules are making less molecules. This implies more towards bond formation than bond breaking. So it might be an exothermic reaction. So you have to take some informed guesses here, okay? Now, uh, if you look at C, so water is being broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. So one molecule is being bro broken down into uh, more than one products, which means that it, it is highly possible that more bonds are being broken and it, it, there are chances that, that this reaction is going to be endothermic, okay? Because it's a decomposition reaction, answer would be C. Why is D not the answer? Because liquid is being converted into solid, which is what? Which is freezing and freezing requires freezing doesn't during freezing heat is released and not absorbed. So it cannot be endothermic. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, which statement is correct for this diagram? The activation energy of the reaction is H3 minus H1. Activation energy is H3 minus H1. This is H3 minus H1 is the activation energy, which is true. Don't need to read other answers. Okay, which row gives the correct use for the named fraction? Bitumen is used for road surfaces, not polishes. Polishes uh, are made by lubricating oils. Uh, diesel is used for aircraft engines. No, it is used in diesel engines. Nephtha or uh, nephtha is used for heating. No, naphtha is used for chemicals, for making chemicals of feedstocks. Paraffin or kerosene oil is used as a fuel for cooking. So, answer would be D. Okay. Okay. Petroleum is separated into fractions by fractional distillation. Which fraction distills off at the highest temperature? So, you need to remember that. Lubricating oil is at the lowest exit point, which means that it will distill off at the highest temperature. What is not essential for photosynthesis? Uh, sugar is not essential for photosynthesis because sugar is made in photosynthesis. It is not required in photosynthesis. Okay. Uh, so this is this is testing the same point that which one has the highest boiling and which one has the lowest. You just need to remember that there is petrol, then there is uh, naphtha, then there is kerosene, then there is diesel, then there is lubricating oil, and then there is bitumen. So you need to remember that. 
okay which which is not true about the process of photosynthesis that the reaction is exothermic this is not true the reaction is endothermic and and the photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction okay the formation of liquid water from hydrogen and oxygen is thought to occur in three stages the first stage second stage third stage which stages would be exothermic let's take three first a gas is being converted into liquid which requires cooling cooling means heat is being it has to be taken out of the system so third will be exothermic okay uh, second as you can see more reactants are forming less products so it is indicated that uh, uh, that more bonds are being formed so it we can deduce that a uh, more energy is being released so we can safely say that 2 and 3 are actually uh, exothermic okay answer would be d one does not give us any indication whatsoever so we don't know that moving on okay this is the last question that we are going to do in this chapter the combustion of methane is exothermic the equation is given below what can be deduced from the fact that the reaction is exothermic fewer bonds are broken than are made uh which can also be uh, you can also invert this invert this statement and say that uh, fewer bonds are broken or you can say that uh, more bonds are made more bonds are made than broken if more bonds are made many many students uh, actually think that since uh, lesser bonds are being broken it automatically implies that the reaction is going to be exothermic but that's not the case uh, exo the 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 factor that decides whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic is the heat absorbed or released number of bonds is not going to do anything about it for example if there is only one bond is being broken and three bonds are being made but Uh, that one bond requires more energy than the energy released by the three bonds by the three bonds so obviously the reaction is going to be endothermic so even though one bond is being broken and three bonds are being made it is it can be possible it is possible that this reaction is still endothermic because energy might be absorbed energy absorbed during this uh, breakage of one bond can be much higher than the energy released during the formation of these three bonds so you cannot did you use that the reaction is exo or endo on the basis of number of bonds so a cannot be the answer less energy is involved in breaking bonds than is involved in making bonds that is your answer which you can also uh, flip this statement uh, to a in a simpler in a simpler outlook that uh, more energy is involved in making bonds as compared to breaking bonds okay so that would be all from this chapter I hope you got the basic concept right and I'm going to see you in my next class inshallah where we are going to discuss rates of reactions rate of reactions until then see you tata allah peace